You're listening to Real Talk. Here we go. In this bitch. We here. We are here, baby. We back. We back, Jack. We back. Woo! All right. So today, on Real Talk, you know, we have a special guest, as you see. Uh, he's also the co-host today. <laughs> he's the co-host and, the, and, and he's going to interview. <laughs> you know? It's how we do, you know? But everybody, you've got to give a huge round of applause to my brother from another mother from the same crib, Brian Frazier Moore. Yeah! <laughs> my G, my G. What's up, man? What up, man? How are you? I'm good. I'm over here at the crib, chilling, okay. hanging out. Okay. You know, what you doing? Where you at? I'm at home. I'm at home today, relaxing, okay. hooking up with my people. Got boots green. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I, it's a relaxed day. Some emails mm-hmm. today, but nothing too bad. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, you see, with some emails, like some work emails, like it's every time you get it, yeah, some work. Yeah, some work emails, some follow up emails. You know how you go. Yeah. Yeah. Well, of course, everybody. I would assume everybody know already that you're from from the crib, that you're from Philly, um, mm-hmm. and and being being from the crib, like is that? Is, I'm assuming that's where you, you know, you started playing drums because, you, <laughs> you know, because I know pops, pastor and all, and you know, yeah, all of that. Growing up in church, you know, playing at the church, not really wanting to play a little kid, you know what I mean? <laughs> Me- Midnight musicals, like when you're like 10 years old, you're sleepy. You know oh, what I mean? Oh, man. <laughs> oh, but yeah, goodness. that's where it happened. That's where it started. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, so is it like being, because, you know, of course I can relate. So it's like when you was in church playing, <laughs> do you, do you, did you ever have those moments where you'd be like, you remember just like hearing something on a record and you go to church the next Sunday or rehearsal and you would try that going? Yes, hearing, <laughs> hearing like wine, especially like Wine's records back then. Like okay. the thing, I, okay. the thing I liked about Wine's records was like the pocket was so crazy. He wasn't even doing a whole lot, but his mm-hmm. the drum sounds, the snare sounds, they had the right muffle. You know, I feel like flying away from all that stuff, man. It was right, great. right. I feel more- <laughs> And mm-hmm. and Al Ingram was on the organ, so it just made it easier. He he was on that vibe. Rest in peace, Al Ingram. That's crazy. I didn't know that. Yeah, so I did not Al know Ingram, that. So it's the tabernacle. That's where it all started, man. Al was Al was the guy that like groomed me, yo, back then. You know what I mean? Wow. Like, he he used to play organ. He'd be playing organ, and at the same time, his hand was always going like this on the side of the organ while he was playing. And if he needed the song to slow down, he slow down. If he needed to speed up, you know what I mean. So I, I always credit him as like my first metronome. <laughs> yeah, that's decent. That's yeah. dope. I had somebody like that. This uh, actually, you know, what's his name? The Truth Manny. His name is Manny. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The Truth. He's one. Yeah. He was. He used to be right next to me doing that before he started rapping. He was a drummer. Same thing next to me and all that, but. He was my human metronome. I, I, I'll say that. I'll admit that. Now you know, man. Now you, it's out there. Now you know. <laughs> now you know. And that's the truth. But I... Well, that's <laughs> the truth. So, <laughs> so, so who, who's, like, who, was the, who was the influence back then? Because, you you know, you brought up the wine and stuff like that. But who, who was your, your drum and artist influence? Man, my, my drum influences were, like, Anthony Spike McCray. Okay. Um, like Garfield Williams, like like OG. um Joe Joe Smith, yeah. Um, Doobie Powell, um, Uncle Doobie, yeah. Like Bill Maxwell, like wow. Um, Bill Maxwell, because he played on a lot of his <laughs> records. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's that's a good one. That's a good name right there. Yeah. Um. Uh. Jeff. Um. Jeff Lowe. Mm-hmm. Um. He mm-hmm. he was a big hero. Little John Roberts growing yes, up. Yes, sir. He, yes, sir. He was a huge. He, he was a huge information. Uh, he was a huge inspiration 
mm-hmm. on setting the tone for my whole career, bro. Like yeah. honestly, if yeah. you want to be honest. Um, but yeah, real. those were my yeah, those were my influences. Um, watching Anthony Spike McCray play with Edward Hawkins, mm-hmm. you know, watching watching uh, Jeff Lowe and them play with um, uh, Natalie Wilson and Joe. You know what I mean? I remember like, them days, boy. That's when that's all that's that. when I started understanding. Like, okay, it's getting different out. <laughs> yeah, it was different. They was they was killing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I still keep yo. in contact with with all my OGs too, man. Like Anthony Spike and, and and uh Garfield, I still stay up with them. That's great. I hope y'all hear yeah. this, but this is my OG, and I still keep in touch with him too. So, yeah, you know, 100%. I think that's how it should be. Right, that's how it should be. Yeah. It's crazy you say that too, because like, you know how like sometimes people, you know, you kind of you kind of you might supersede, you know, your your, your idol. You know what I'm saying? Like you might get mm-hmm. a little above them sometimes. But it's like, mm-hmm. how did, 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 did it's great that you said that you reach out to them, you're still in touch with them. How like what was that that made that like that made you be like, you know what? No, I ain't. I gotta. I gotta. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm not that boy. I gotta go make sure they're good. Yeah. I mean, think about it. I mean, if if you want to really think about it without no ego and like being. 100% honest about it. Those people that influence you, man, that's a lifelong thing. Like, you you wouldn't be in those positions if it wasn't for them. If if I didn't see Anthony Spike McCray, if I didn't see Garfield, if I didn't see Joe Smith, all of them, like, what would, I, what would I have to aspire about? You take that aspiration and you mix it with your machine and then you become a product of, of them. So I'm always a product of them. Life, drums, family it don't matter like mm-hmm. they inspired mm-hmm. me like that and that's the way it should be right that's real talk that's that's mm-hmm. very that's, yeah that's definitely the way it should be because you done inspired yeah. me like a mug so i'll be like hey man you all right did you eat today yeah <laughs> you cool? all the time mm-hmm. y'all yeah all the time i appreciate that too man oh yeah ain't nobody playing and we, we real brothers <laughs> um and, and and the fact that like you you meeting all these people and having all these connections, right? Like, what what was your first what was your first big gig? If you if you if you remember, <laughs> what mm-hmm. was your first gig to you if you if you remember? And how and how did you get it? Okay, that's yeah, I do remember. I will never forget. Mm-hmm. So, honestly, what I call what I call my first gig is like a, a national or international artist, right? That's known, like, because I I had a gig. What I count as my first first gig, right? Mm. But it was kind of still safe. It didn't push me to the, the industry like I was looking to was uh was the Whitehead brothers. They had the, they had the song called uh 187. Your love is a 187. Right. And so the reason I credit them is because um this is a funny story. So um we're in Hammersmith in London, uh, the mm. Hammersmith arena, right? And we're opening up for Black Street at that time. Gerald Hayward was playing. Wow, OG, time, right? Shout out, no mm-hmm. triple OG. And so, um, so I always t- always tell the story. Like we we played our set, you know what I'm saying? We I'm straight out of church, you know what I'm saying? Like so, we played our set, and we was, after the show, we was like, yo, we killed, yo, we murdered them, bro. Like, yo, we. Mm-hmm. Yo, we mm-hmm. we the truth, you know. You know that's <laughs> how you feel mm-hmm. after you know you play and you don't really know. So I remember, you know, having that that whole mentality and arrogance, if you will, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and and uh, so we stayed to watch Black Street Show. I remember this, it was about to come on. So about to come on. Yo, that curtain opened up, bro, and the sound that came off that stage crushed my hopes and dreams, bro. I told Joe jo this all the time. Bro, it humbled me <laughs> so hard. The, the the sound. Okay, let's just start at the drums. The drum tuning, the the selection of drums that he he was familiar with that would translate in that room. Right. You know what I'm saying? The right. the right symbols that he had, the right energy that he put into it. You know how he played with the track. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? It was. Mm-hmm. So I yeah. credit that as my first gig, which gave me my biggest experience. It's like, oh, it's a different thing playing on these stages. Right. But my first uh, big gig that I credit as, you know, okay, wow, this is it, was probably Aaliyah and Genuine. 
And that mm. that gig came from uh, Johnny Croon, my OG. Another one of my OGs I still keep up with to this day. We always talk. Um, uh, Johnny Croon saw me playing around Philly. You know, I played at some of the clubs, you know, some of those clubs. Yep. They, yep. they was the cats back then. They they was they was playing boys and men. You know what I'm saying? They was okay, so they was the ones. Off. Yeah. They were the smacking. Okay. They, they had a squad. They had um Freddie Holiday on drums. They had um Kurt playing keys. I, I think he's playing keys. I, I can't remember the whole man. But they had a squad, right? And so Johnny saw me. Johnny was a drummer. Johnny's a drummer too. And so he saw me, you know, he believed in me, hooked me up. So here I am on the gig playing with both artists. We we did a tour, Budweiser Superfest. And it was it was genuine. Aaliyah, Mary J. Blige, um, Mary J. Blige, that was um, Gordon Campbell playing drums, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. and uh, Drew Hill, Mike Clemens was playing drums. Mike, right, yep. <laughs> yep. So we did a whole run. So I was playing with two groups. And um, so when the, the key thing about this was, the point of this whole thing was the trust that Johnny Croom had in me. Johnny, mm. Johnny Croom believed in me, bro. He told me that every time he was set up next to me, he said, every time, Brian, I pointed you and I go like this, I want you to play everything you know. I was like, what? what? He's like, yes, when I point to you. <laughs> and if you look back at all the old videos, you know, stuff like that, I have some on my YouTube page, you can see him, like, going to the hooks when it was time to get hyped to go to the hook. He would turn over and he would go like this. And that's that's what gave me to go, that's to dope. play. That I was wish we could get that fun. these days. Yo, you ain't lying. <laughs> now you get this. You get stop, yo. You playing too much. Yeah. So the pivotal thing about this tour also was Timberland was new as a producer. So this was like one of the first times you heard a drummer um, um, interpret Timberland's beats. You know, all the trip, mm. the triple. <laughs> This was the first time because he was new. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was big. And then Keenan Ivory Williams from that same gig put me on a television show to be visible to the world with, with those same. That's awesome, levels. yo. So That's thank awesome. you, Johnny. Right. For believing in me, bro. Right. And, and let me have that moment along with all you guys. But if it wasn't for that, uh, I, I definitely wouldn't have had the eyes on me for the, the work. That's afterwards. crazy, yo. That's a yeah. huge, that's a, whoa, that's a huge thank you. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, cause that was the door where as far as what people be talking about, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yo, so, yo, you, you talk, you, you get with that right person, you know what I'm saying? And that was a, a an amazing example because then, yeah. like you said, you, you working on, you on two, you doing two artists on one tour. Mm-hmm. That's, come on, yo, like. You the, so you the king, you you the one of the pioneers of double dipping. <laughs> I mean, I guess I don't know, you know yeah, what I mean. Yeah, but I, you gotta be. I just know, I just know that that opportunity, uh, it changed my whole life, bro. Like yeah. honestly, it, it it really did. And you know what I mean, just the trust that he had, and the belief that he had. I didn't have credentials to really back back it up at that time, so. That was huge. That was my big, big gig, big experience. You know, shout out to the OG, of course, again. Yep. You know what yep. I'm saying? That's that's dope, yo. I never knew that. Yep. yep. Look at this. That's why I'm yep. glad we're doing this interview. No finding out stuff right now. But so 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 when I grew up, I remember you being more so with like uh with Usher. Mm-hmm. Right. Usher and Usher and Aaliyah more so for me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, like, what was the, what would you say was like the the mindset to be playing for those type of artists, as you know, pop and R and B and you know what I'm saying, like in that limelight, in that world. And how old were you then? If you remember, mm. how old were you like? I, I had to be, man, I had to be somewhere like 23, 24. 23, 24, like 24 playing with Usher and Leah, yeah. Yep. Wait. Uh-huh. <laughs> Wait, was they were they, were they younger? They were they younger. younger. That's right. That's the thing. Aaliyah right. was was kind of newish. Okay. Usher was on um he was he was kind of new. He was on his my way um mm-hmm. around, around that time. 
Um, I, Usher, Usher did came about because of those, the eyes that was on me because of the Canaanite Williams or okay. um, people seeing me. We, we didn't have iPhones and cameras yeah. to, for video yeah. footage to be seen out there. So the hustle was even harder um, for people to come out. But uh, Valdez, you know, Valdez Brantley, another OG, Detroit in the building. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. Like he he believed in me, bro. He 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 really did. And he honed me. He 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 kind of honed me to okay, this is what I'm looking for while I want you to be you. So this is where this combination came in. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, well, uh the arrangements are going more like this, or yeah, the sound we're looking for. We're capturing old school sound here, but still play a lot. And then Usher come in, and you know everybody knows he he loves drums. Like he, mm-hmm. I I, w- I want to hear drums. So it was just the M- MD phase, the original record phase, and and my artist loves a whole lot of drums phase. Trying to mess that together on Usher. Yeah, yeah. It, it's funny when you say that because people people get that mixed up with, you know, what I'm saying like the artist loves drums and with with being busy. Because I ain't gonna yeah. you know, we, you know, we real on air. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. Yeah. when I when I so, did the gig, it was like, man, it, I was landing the patterns. He said it. He was like, "Yo, you playing the fuck out of these patterns, bro." But yeah, I just need a little more. And I'm like, "Well, I thought I was giving you a lot, but if you want a lot more, you could just say play drums." You know what I'm saying? Like, just you just tell me just go for blood more. But mm-hmm. I'm thinking more musically, and then you know, I hear a different. Drums, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Well, so, so always, how, how, go ahead. It's always like you know that that's our jobs, right? You know that's what happens. You know what I mean? We're we're providing a service for our artists, and sometimes the artists might be able to articulate. Sometimes they might not. You know right. what I'm saying? I've been I've been with artists to be like, yo, I, yo, just, just 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 give me that shit, yo. <laughs> yo. Like, what what what? what? <laughs> What did you want? I don't know. Sorry. All right. You know what I'm saying? And mm-hmm. so that's what makes us um, so incredible in these gigs. It's not just always the chops, but it's really being able to take certain things, try certain things, have the heart to try certain things and, and uh, read the room and read the MD and read the arrangement and make sure I'm staying on time. You know what I mean? It's just, yeah. it's just a lot. But um, at that particular time for us, yeah. Uh, I think he was brand, he, not brand new, but he was more on the new side. Okay. So it was like helping him develop what he was trying to say, you know, at that yeah. particular time. Um, but golly, it's like a, a funny story about that. And everybody always talks about this. <laughs> I get a lot of the questions is uh, you make me want to drum solo, right? Yep. So uh, what people don't know is, you know, um, and I don't remember it verbatim, but going into the solo, um, uh, bar six or seven. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I messed up. Yeah, <laughs> like I messed. It was it was a mess up. Um, that happened there. But at that particular time, I was very brave on my recovery time. Right, right. It was like if I felt something, it was like, oh, whatever. I'm off to the next <laughs> thing. Right. You know what I mean? And so when when people like I've had people transcribe and stuff like that, it's like that's oh, man, funny gotta, as hell. Yeah, that's yeah, like you transcribing so, a dope piece of a mess up. <laughs> a mess up, bro. A mess up. But that that was a that was an iconic moment. You know that was yeah. that was uh, the first time really. Me being able to be featured with a, with an artist, a pop artist like that on any type of soloing, that was my first yeah. time. And, and yeah. that's when I was like, "Yeah, this is." I said, "Yeah, now drums is going to a different level." I was like, "This nigga's out here playing with his shirt off, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> with no kind of chest." I hadn't developed my chest yet at that moment. Bird John, bird man out there, just killing. <laughs> Glasses on. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you know, you know it's crazy. No, you, you know what? Nobody on, nobody, nobody on know. Nobody on know this. I never, I never said this. And you know what, little John, I still said this early, but, but I'm saying it now, right? So, uh, remember that Tasmanian devil, right? Yep. I had big ass, 
Tasmanian devil on the joint, right? Mm-hmm. Yo, that guy inspired from seeing Lil Zan. Let me tell you how extreme my brain was at that time, right? Mm-hmm. I saw Little John do that way back. I think he was even with Lucy Pearl. Like he was back. Damn, okay. he had stuff. And I was like, yo, that shit is dope. Yo, right, like right. I love that. <laughs> yo, got the stuff. And, stuff and was Jones. I never thought about that. Influence. Right? And so, mm-hmm. The influence. Influence like crazy. So me, mm-hmm. with my overboard ass, I go overboard <laughs> and get one stuffed animal that's like Four feet. <laughs> what was that? What was I thinking? Um, and then I strapped it. Thinking? The, <laughs> I strapped it to the front of the kid. My point is, man, like be you. You know what I'm saying? You never yeah. you never know who's inspired, man. Even if you yep. get inspired from someone else and, and do. But little John, man, man, shout out for you for being an innovator. You uh you showed me that. Bro. Yeah. Yeah. Among you know. other things, but we're at this point right now. Yeah, you know how it is. Family yeah. brother. And speaking of like being yourself, um, I, I'm, of course your followers know, but most of them might not know you. You're a brand. Like your name is Brian Fraser Moore, but BFM, BFM World is a real, you know what I'm saying? Like, how did that come about? Like, what made you just be like, you know what? It's time to really make this thing legit, governmentally oh, legit. <laughs> That is a great question. So, um, okay, fast forward, doing gigs, all of that, whatever we do, right? Um, I did this clinic where it was me, Dom Familaro, um, Thomas Lang, and Omar Hakeem, right? So, not, needless to say, I'm nervous. Um, my clinics were set up. I always do my clinic set up. I have two drum sets. Because I always want people throughout the clinic, if they feel inspired, they want to try it. Let me come up and try it. You know, let me play right, right, right. Let's play a groove together, whatever, interactive. Mm-hmm. So naturally, so at this clinic, I went on first. I insist that I go on first because these legends, like they're legends. Right. Like I should yeah. go on first, right? Right. So I went on first, had the kids come up. with All right, cool. They went up, they killed it. I'm watching, learning, and the clinic's over. Um, afterwards, Dom Familaro comes up and he says, my brother, yeah. I love, I love what you, what you doing, man? I love everything. You have the kids coming up and everything, man. I love it. He says, listen, listen when, when you're really ready to do it, though, let me know. We're here for you. I was what the hell? Thank you, but what the hell? Wait. <laughs> really? <laughs> thank you. First, thank you. Yeah. Uh, what does that mean, right? Yeah. Like, what is, I don't that know. That sounds crazy. Scott insulted or like i i don't know what that means right so after we were talking i'm asking him and he was like brian you know you're a great drummer you're doing this you're doing the clinics he said but let me show you something he went and showed me all the books he wrote he went and showed me how many students that he has around the world how much how many curriculum that he had in place his sure. his merchandise I, I heard a, a myth, and I'm not even sure it's true, that he uh, had over a million frequent flyer, flyer miles. Like Probably. He he was a global brand, bro. It was Dom, Famala- Dom Famala- Famalero, the brand. Yo. And mm-hmm. when I saw that coming from him, seeing what Thomas Lang was doing, Thomas Lang has a boot camp, that is, an annual boot camp that he does every year. It's like, And then I see, uh, I, I'm just watching my heroes and that birth BFM world, bro. At that particular moment, I decided to take everything that I had and uh, every uh, talent or everything that I could think of and merge it into a business and, and try to make it a one-stop shop for musicians and drummers to get encouraged, to get job placement, to have curriculum in schools. I have a six-part yeah. curriculum, five subject can needs. Um, that I have a boot camp idea. Shout out to Thomas Lang for that. I have public speaking. I have consultations. I have lessons. I have my signature products. So every anything that I can think of, um, I'm dang. Let's go. Yeah. And what, what's what's what signature products? What you, what you got? What you got there? So I have um, uh, signature sticks. Yeah, come on. I have signature signature snare. Um, mm-hmm. my, my signature ride just debuted with Sabian of yep. the FM world. I have uh, signature uh, drum keys. I have 
signature uh, low beater bass uh, drum pedals. I think that's it. My one of my goals is you know because I don't know if it's done, but maybe uh, maybe not. Maybe I don't know. I want to have a signature product with every one of my companies. Say it again. Say it again. Yeah. Let them know. Say it again. Hey, I want to have a signature product with every one of my companies. Mm -hmm. And and just a little while we're on the subject, just a little bit. Like signature products are great. Let's keep it, let's keep it a thousand. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Signature products are great. It's like a staple of success. You know what I mean? Okay. Which is which is incredible. You know right. what I mean? I mean, Grammys are a staple of success. Tony Awards mm -hmm. are a staple of success. Mm -hmm. This is all great. Um, what I'm doing now is I'm trying to change the uh trajectory of signature product deals like mm -hmm. um, more percentage stepping up in your business to do more having a seller's permit to be able to stamp your logo on a product um uh, to be a distributor of your own product i mean distributors mm -hmm. make a higher percentage than artists um, as we all know so these are things that i'm implementing implementing into my deal as well so just an encouragement for those out there, you know, get the signature product, but um, get the signature product uh, deal to go behind it. Hell yeah! Hell, listen, I ain't gonna lie. I, 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 you know me. I've always done like custom. You know what I'm saying? Like custom stuff. Um, but you're really doing things where it's like global through major companies. You know what I'm saying? I'm and trying. huh? I'm trying. Like, no, I'm you trying. are, man. We no, we doing it. You're doing it. It's it, it's just step by step. That's all. No, but it's like, yeah. you know, I, I hope you all really understand that because it's like, this is something that, like you're saying, you you can capitalize. You know, you capitalize off of this. Like, this is really your brand. This is not just you always yeah. just looking for free stuff. Where you always just like, you know what I'm saying, like endorsements. Yeah. All it's like, yo, know, you got to really, you know, what I'm saying, like, you got to put yourself out there now. People yeah. got to know I mean, about you. This this ad, my my train of thought, you know, and, and you know, this is this this is some realness right here, just for you, and you know and it's just for perspective, right? You know, we go all our lives at this at this music thing. It's it's our passion. We would do it for free if it was the right situation, right? So like like it's our passion, and and there's there's levels of career movement, period, not just career movement in the in the entertainment industry, just right. period, on a global talk, you know, right. you go to McDonald's, you start out mopping the floor, then you right. move to fries, like, <laughs> to America, right? <laughs> right, and pretty right. soon, I'll be on the grill, you know, right. or, or I might be offered a management position, or I might actually, after that, save my money and buy me a franchise, like, like, it mm. never Stop. So, yeah. Wh why can't we use the same thing in our industry? Like, to get mm. a gig or to do something like that is a stop. It's a stop. It's just another bus stop. But what right. do you do with that notoriety, with that fame, right? With, 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 with the money that you get from the tours? What, what you do with that, I think that's the next step. We sometimes we stop at this step. Yeah. This is it. This is the pinnacle of it. I'm on a gig. I've played four. I used to play four. Right. I'm going to play four. Play right. four. Hired by. Don't have your own. Listen, <laughs> the sky is the limit, bro. The you know limit. And none, of these, and none of these gigs are at the sky level. It should be at the sky level for us. So just keep that in mind put a little business in your hustle you know what i mean put a little yeah. thought into it man put a little put a little individuality if that if i say mm -hmm. it right uh oh, into right. into your thing man you know what i mean mm -hmm. and make a huge difference shout out to don Famalao for helping me to see that man and I, I love you bro rest in peace but listen this thing big drummers out here doing something it's levels, bro. Like I appreciate all the love. I do. I appreciate all the love for my journey. Mm -hmm. I I am happy. I'm me and my wife have a beautiful home. We like we, we're okay. Right. Here, here's the thing. I still see drummers, and I'm just like, yo, he's doing what? Like, wait, mm -hmm. he's going to speak 
at a seminar of a Fortune 500 company for 90 minutes for major corporations uh, mm -hmm. for 90 minutes. And, you know, I hear the stories, you know, about what kind of money could be involved mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, in that. And I'm That's like, real. wait a minute. Wait a wait a minute. You ever meet a drummer? <laughs> you, ever, you, you ever meet a drummer and you know that drummer is better than you, right? Mm -hmm. And there's a feeling that comes over you if if that's all you have is drums, right? Like if a drummer is better than you, then you almost feel threatened because you're like, oh, he's better than me. Right. Like, no. How's he better yeah. than me? No. Right. And if you know he's better than you. Nine times out of ten, you don't want to be getting close with him. It creates this weirdness, yeah. right? Yeah. But, but if you knew that you had a company, if you know that this drum is better than you, but you knew that you had a company or opportunities that could bring you $10,000, $20,000, mm -hmm. $50,000, then all of a sudden, that drummer that's better than you, it don't seem like a threat. It's like, right. a, it's like, it's, it's, it's like a, it's like when I was younger and I thought I was the man, right? And I would I would go up to a drummer, an OG drummer that I know have been around for a long time. I would feel this boastness inside of me. Like, yeah, yo, I'm, yeah. I'm Brian Fraser Moore. Like, mm -hmm. and I, I would somewhat be so blinded and, and arrogant in my own tone that I would almost think, yo, I, I'm bigger than you. Yeah. Yep. Right? I, I, I know what you mean. Yep. And they would be so nice to me. They would be so <laughs> open. They they would tell me like, yo, yo, you're killing, bro. You right. are amazing. And then I would learn about them, see where they, how they live, see their house, find out the endorsements that they had outside of them. Yeah. I was like, you know what? It hit I'm me. not better. I'm not better. No, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm not better. You know I'm not better. That's why you're open to compliment me psychologically right. you know what i mean yep. that's really going to make you open up to somebody like that nonetheless you think that you're better than them in human yeah, yeah. Well, i'm saying all of this to say look man this is a stop you know what i'm saying this is a this is a rest stop bro this is a this yep. is an accomplishment yes it is it's accomplishment but you aspire to do more you can do more do yes, more sir. Push, push the envelope so the yeah FM world. And, and, and so like when you did, did you did you go did you like did you go to the company and be like listen all right I'm I've been here you know what I'm saying I've been doing this for y'all I've been my I've been promoting and promoting I've been working and working what we doing or or did they come to you on some like hey bro you know what pal we've been seeing you you've been killing on the world and stuff want to give you a snap <laughs> was it that type show? <laughs> You are <laughs> stupid. <yeah. laughs> Which well, way was it? <laughs> okay, okay. So um for my snare, um, shout out to John at Pearl. That was a conversation that we always had. He's an artist rap. So that was something that I brought up to him. And I, the way I brought it up to him was like, hey, you know what? It would be dope too. You know what I'm saying? There you go. Like it, yeah, there you go. It, it would be dope to to do that, right? And he agreed. So I knew mm -hmm. I had his support uh, on that one, but I still understood the game and I understood the tunnels to know that he wasn't the one to decide when it happens, how it happens, the price point that it happens. I had to go through a whole tunnel. Yeah. So my aggression, be, uh, I traded my aggression and anger in for um, understanding the game and trying to move within the channels of it. Makes sense. So Makes sense. Snare, snare took a while. It, it, it took a while. Yeah. If I'm mistaken, maybe like a two year span of it Woo. coming into yeah, coming Man. into fruition. Week two. I'd have so, been like, you know what, John, you can keep that shit. <laughs> I'm gonna talk to you next year. <laughs> <laughs> two years. Damn. Damn. Two years. But in the midst of those two years, I was mm -hmm. I was hustling. I was hustling my ass off, yo. Yeah, that's good. Though. I was trying to be I was trying to be everywhere so that I can come back to them and be like what are you mm -hmm. ready yet mm -hmm. or what more mm -hmm. what more do i need to do you know um yeah. the symbol came about uh, as well same thing with chris thank you um uh, it took a it took a little minute maybe maybe about two years but maybe about a year and a half two years for okay. it to come into fruition 
Um, the thing about the simple interesting story while we're here is the, sim yep. the symbol that's out now was not the symbol that was supposed to come out. So okay. uh, we started doing, we started doing, uh, uh, you know, prototypes for the symbol. I had a carbon fiber design on it. I, I showed it on Instagram a couple of times. Carbon fiber design, the symbol was kind of um, earth ride-ish back in the day, okay. heavy tone with the film on top. So I'm, I'm testing it out. You know, I test it I play them on the Super Bowl, test them out, record on the Super Bowl, everything I did on there with that. And then um, uh, we we were trying to get, you know, everything, uh, the logistics, the, the design, trying to get everything clear, whatever, whatever. In the midst of that, I got offered the paint gig. The crazy part about this is that that ride that I was building would not go on the paint gig. It don't mm. fit. Right. Sound-wise? Sound Sound-wise was okay. too heavy. So mm -hmm. at that point, I had to decide, am I going to miss out on however long I'm, I'm going to be out with Pink, with, with this amazing artist? Am I going to miss out on promotion of my ride symbol to wait until I'm finished the tour to promote it? Ah, oh, that doesn't make sense, right? Because I can't play it on the tour. It's not going to It's not gonna work. So I hit Chris Stanky. I was like... Bro, I think we have to start over. Oh, oh, god! I, was like, I, I said, I, I said, oh. I think we, I think we got to start over. And there were some things on that side that didn't work out too well. So by divine order, we was able to start over. Bow, start over. Whoop de whoop de whoop. Make the bell mm -hmm. crystal. Make it raw. Make the lip super thin. I think we went through quite a few prototypes. Thinner, thinner, thinner. You yeah. know, because I wanted to bash with pink, you know, sun, yeah, yeah, yeah. Down, yeah. Down, you know, I needed to well, put the sound control lips on it, control it from it. Then, now, new symbol. And right. I get the promo on there. So yes, that, that was the whole process for that um, and the time frame. That's when dope though, yo. To fruition. Damn. Yeah. Two years mm -hmm. though. Whew, I'm Two always years, on that bro. joint. That's, that's, a, that's, a, that's patience and that's why you got blessed with it. That's well, exactly why, I mean, bro. When I look back on it, yo, I needed those two years mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. all of those situations. I needed all of them because the evolution of my work, the evolution of sound, the evolution of products that are hot. I mean, rest in peace, Aaron Spears came out with an amazing ride symbol yep. that, that you can bash on and the articulation was crazy. It's a multi-purpose. That's that's mm -hmm. marketing. Right, right. He was he was on to something with that. He it was marketing at its best to market it multifaceted instead of yeah. just this one ride symbol that hopefully the large demographic <laughs> of drummers would like. You right. know what I'm saying? Hopefully. Rather than right. making it for everyone, so yeah, it, I, listen. I guarantee you, a, a, a BFM kit is coming. Signature kit, bro. I got an idea. I got really? an idea. Listen, listen. What shout out? Gotta... I give a lot of shout outs. As, as you should, because you're a graceful, right. you're, you're a grateful dude. And people shout out to Quest Love. Like <laughs> shout out to uh, to Amir Quadavius Thompson. Because a drummer at his status could, could come out with a drum set that was $10 million, right? Mm. And I think he would probably sell a few. But his yeah. marketing, him knowing his status as, as an icon and as an entity in this entertainment business, whether you're talking about restaurants, whether you're talking about films, whether you're talking about music, right. whatever it's art, whatever you want to talk about, his entity... Um, I respected the fact that he made a consumer-friendly kit mm -hmm. um, that sounds amazing. That the price point was reachable. Right. right. That's the so you, then, you know what I'm saying? So if I <laughs> if, if I have a kit that's coming out, I'm all, I'm I'm already know where I'm going. Yeah, one hundred percent. It's about mass. Um, mass sales and mass uh, global takeover rather mm. than, um, yo, I'm Brian Freeman Moore. And so, you know what? I'm the man. 
So, by my kid, so... you know, man, by my kid, you're gonna have to pay such and such. And don't sell nothing. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, what, yeah. don't reach nothing. Don't inspire. No, you know how many people feel inspired by by being able to say, "I got a Quest Love drum set, bro." Do you know what that yeah. does mm-hmm. to a person? Anyway, just just I'm mentally, saying. just mentally, mentally, just mentally. Yep, mentally alone. Mentally, yeah. yeah. They think they got an afro. The old Quest yeah. with the with the pro and the pick. They think they him still. Absolutely. Much, much better than the insecurities that they had before. That mm-hmm. we all have. Right. Mm-hmm. And and so. it's crazy to say that because a lot of a lot of kids these days have a lot of insecurities too. Like, and I noticed that with a lot of musicians in general, uh younger musicians. Like what's like what would you say to them as far as like, you know, just the confidence and um the cause a lot of them are discouraged. They're not, they're not where we, you know, where we're at. We're whatever and they only like 16 17 maybe yeah. maybe 19 whatever yeah i mean that's a tough position first of all i feel you mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying for we we all in this together bro like i'm i'm a realist when it comes to this man i mm-hmm. listen you you might look at me and be like yo i'm not where yet you might look at mm-hmm. boots you might be like yo i'm not where yet you might look at your hero and say yo i'm not where they at but here's the thing man we all have the same thing even though you're not where i have insecurities yep i do i do i have insecurities <laughs> as a person as a player as a as a father as a husband as a brother it is what it is so so have a little grace on yourself <laughs> and have a little grace as real on talk others that's real that care about you yo like have a little grace because we're all going through you the worst thing you could do with your insecurities is turn them into daggers. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't mm. turn them into daggers because mm. now, now you're creating a whole nother thing. So the first thing right. I would say is, I feel you. I feel you. Like, I, right. I get it. <laughs> yep. Right? But what we're going to do with those insecurities also defines you as a person as well. Mm. So now it's still up to you what you do with those securities. Let someone help you. Seek help. Encouraging things. Mm-hmm. perspective you know yeah. what i mean here here's here's one that i recognize all the time like that i that i get and i don't know why like, if anyone doesn't know i'm nowhere near i want to be you know what i'm saying same, working same, i'm with you i'm a witness same here me, too, me neither okay I'm so, with when you. I, so when i say this when you look at me or look at someone in that position and you you have envy because of your insecurities this is not the way to go. Whew. That was a real one. community. Damn. We, listen, I get it. You think I don't look at Boots and some of the stuff that he played and be like, man, fuck. This <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You think I don't... Yo, you, you think I don't look at him? You think right. I don't look at Spanky and, and feel like... Yeah. What? Like, yeah. You think I don't feel like this is... This is the understanding part to insecurities, right? Like we all have them. But what do I do? Do I look at him and create this wall of envy and this disconnect of jealousy or or whatever it may be? Or do I hold him tight yeah. to me? Do I hold him close to me? Yo, right. you, you cold, my G. Right. You cold. I can't do that, yeah. yo. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And create a place that we can still be brothers. This is the thing. These are the decisions we have to make with our insecurities. It's okay. We all have them. But what we do with them is very important. Very important. Them, boy, them things is... Them things real. They'll tear you down. They real. They will tear you down. They real. I see a dude <laughs> in the airport with better tennis shoes than me. I'll be like, man, I don't like them. All Why? Right, you up, know yeah. nothing about... <laughs> you know... You know nothing about, but that the feeling of the insecurities can lead you. Airport um, sneaks, though. Come on, man. You know what I mean. <laughs> like it can no, lead you to a, a place. I'm just saying, mm-hmm. you don't have to go. Yeah, I'm. I'm glad you're making these points, man. Because this is this is something. Like I said, this is stuff that you know. Like you said, when they when they look up to you, some people don't get to hear these things from us. And you know what I'm saying like, and that's one reason why I like I love doing this because it's like. They get to hear how we talk sometimes, you know what I mean? They get to hear this is this is normal. 
know what I'm saying? Like you said, you yeah. saw, you see, you see somebody in the airport, and you like, yeah, this, this sneakers, but no, bro, like, no, no, you can't have better sneaks than mine, yeah. Ah, that's so damn dumb. It's, <laughs> it's so dumb, right? It's so stupid. And, and and realize how that translate over when you see another drummer play, yeah. right? You yeah. see another drummer play, and he chilling, he in his bag, right? Mm -hmm. As he should be. And then so you want to go, go ask him. Go ask him. Kimmy, look, can we sit down one day, bro? Because I need to know them sneaks is hard. I need to know where you got them sneaks from. Where... <laughs> that's what we say. How hard is that? Doesn't it feel better? Doesn't it feel better? Yeah, it feels better. You're right. You're right. <laughs> no, it's, that's real, man. And, and I think like um. I'm, I'm glad you said that because for me, I always had an insecurity of like, um, no, no lie, same thing like you said, like with like, honesty, spank. When I first was when I was younger, and I I, I was coming up a little bit, whatever. I didn't know of spank until like later, like until like my mid teens, like mid teens, something mm -hmm. like that. And of course, you know, we all in the church field, you know what I'm saying? So it's mm -hmm. like, it was just crazy hearing his name everywhere and I'm like you said I'm thinking to myself I'm like all right well I'm me like I don't care like you know what I'm saying like mm -hmm. I'll hear a boy one day when I heard him play that first <laughs> time I didn't know what he was doing because you you remember that's the world young spank was was different he had no way remorse. different he had nah. no remorse yo nah. like so all he me, saw was blood yo period he saw blood in yeah. church yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I, like for me, Kill. that wasn't that was an insecurity. That was an actual insecurity when I would like, you know, we would see uh let's say like we let's say I'm on the same bill with with, with Tyrone Trinidad. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm playing for somebody else and it's like, what we gotta go up for him? Like, yeah. you know what? I know, I know that's the homie, but it's like, uh, nah, he about to shut this joint down. One hundred percent. Like what like when I played with Usher and John we were open for him, mm -hmm. for Janet. Oh, oh! <laughs> you know, like, you're like Bro, yo, uh, I gotta go no. hammer. I gotta go MC hammer every night. Bro, Bro. yeah, he so was murdering every yeah. night. Bro, the yeah. HBO special. That's that. That's, that's only. That's just that's that. Be, can I speak freely? Speak, speak freely. Yo, niggas wasn't doing HBO specials back then, bro. Mm -mm. I'm sorry. Like, think about no. that. I mean, they, they have Dom and Dunn. I don't even know if HBO does specials anymore. But back then, nobody Listen. was doing, nobody, nobody was doing no HBO special? Not I was on the, the I was on the side of the stage, bro, when that HBO special <laughs> happened. We, right on the side of the stage. When that happened and he did that solo, bro, <laughs> I felt like I won the lottery, bro. Wow. I said, he came off that stage. I said, bro, you know what you just did? You just wrapped on HBO, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Unheard of, bro. So I'm, I'm just saying, oh, as, just... An, as an example of insecurities, right? Uh -huh. Two different styles of music. You know, no, no diss to anything, but Usher right. was a go hand show. And, right. and we had arrangements. But Janet was a full production show. Yes. So it different. was like it was different. I was just like, yeah, I, I had every I had everything I needed to hate on that, bro. I understand. I understand. Because the funny thing is was, the crazy thing is on the flip is all it took on the flip was, damn, what if it was the other way? Then I'd have been on HBO first. But you don't want to get the kill first on HBO. <laughs> oh yeah, HBO ain't stopped the cameras until after our show was over. <laughs> That's crazy. They said, "Oh, oh, Usher's up." Okay, cameras yeah. off. Cameras off. Yeah, yeah, the cameras <laughs> off. Go, go, take a break. Yeah, crew, take a break. Yo, that's crazy, yo. Big. Yeah, that's like, that's real life. That could have been I mean, that could have been me. Yeah. yeah. I feel you. Yeah. But the insecurities, man, you know. Insecurities. It's yeah, they, they are real. They're definitely real. But I'm you know, like but like you said, you you that that it should humble you too. You know what I'm saying? Like that should really humble you to the point where it's like, all right, I thought I was bull. 
I guess I, I guess that was bull. Like, like I'm tripping. Try, trying yeah. to think that you are the bull is stressful, bro. Yep. It's so stressful. And you got to keep it there mentally. You got to you, keep yourself there. You do. It's mentally draining because you're always, you never enjoy. How about this? You never enjoy your progress. You never enjoy Ooh. where you are, which you worked so hard for because you are trying to think, I need to be better than this person or that person. Or you never enjoy your own progress. You're going to leave this earth and it's going to be like, how was it? You're going to be in heaven. Like, how was it? They're going to be like, I really don't know, bro. Because I right. was trying to be better than I was than trying me. to be the boy. Oh, man. You're you robbing yourself, bro. Yeah. That's that's crazy. That's that's the truth right there, though. Damn. Mm. Y'all better stop it. Better stop being insecure, and whatever. L- listen, it. is, <laughs> is Boots better than me? Yes. Okay, is is is, nope. is Devin is, is is can I sit down with Devin Six Teller? No. Okay. Uh, can Neither. can I can I will I sit down with Jamal Moore? No. Will I will I sit down with Spanky? If only if they was holding my mom hostage, then maybe Shut I would up. have to sit down. Right? You know what I mean? Then we gotta talk. Then we gotta talk. Then maybe. You know. I feel you, yo. No, I feel you. Yeah. And shout out to all the homies and brothers, man, and all the fellas. And you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it, listen, man, it's yeah. all love because we all go, we all know the real. All y'all gonna get Absolutely. on here soon. Y'all, gonna, y'all better tell the truth too. We all got them things. We listen, all man. Them. At the at the end of the day, you know, we're human. Like right. it's okay to have these things. I don't. Yeah. I don't think the goal is to get rid of those things. I think the goal is to manage those things. Just to be honest. So. Yeah. Just manage. No, you're right. Well, look, man, I mean, at the end of the day, hold on one second. You, um, this is one of the things that, like, you know, at the end of the day where we learning, like, from each other, right? Like, that's what that's, that's what it's supposed to be, bottom line. Like, insecurities 100%. or whatever, it don't matter, whatever it is, you fucking learn from each other. So, 100%. Like, yeah. Hey, you know, I wanted to say this, too, because your platform is the only platform I could really get. Oh, you know this. you can. Yes, you sure can. See all of it. I want to. I want to call out. Uh huh. I want to call out a situation because ain't nobody calling it out. I want to call it out. Listen, OGs against young G's. Okay. Okay. I don't even know what this is. No. Okay. Let it be heard from me. I'm open to anybody. I'm open to anybody for yep. anything. If you're yep. trying to get ahead, you're trying to get ahead. But listen, don't take my disconnect or six degrees of separation or anything that I'm not messing with you or or that. Or, look, I can't speak for all OGs. You know, I'm just speaking for myself. Yeah. I, I don't go out. I'm a very private person. So if anybody's taking anything, you, I think my number or my emails is plastered on the billboard. Anybody know me, they reach out to me, I'm responding. That, that's just me. Right. So let's not make it a general thing of OGs against young Gs. Let's just mm-hmm. let's just make it a camaraderie of, of, amongst musicians, man. Some people you will have that with, some people you won't. You know? But as Seriously. for me, I want to take this platform and say I open a service that is conditioned to helping people. Okay. Yep. I open yep. I open a service a thought out service that is not only helping people, but actually placing them on jobs to help them with contracts, to help them with moving rights, to help them with figuring out this maze of this entertainment industry. I I ain't the best drummer. This is my 30th year I'm celebrating. I ain't the best drummer, nor do I want the pressure of being the best drummer. But you know what? For 30 years, if a nurse was in the field for 30 years, she knows how that machinery moves if a trash yep. man was in that industry for 30 years he know everything about Bro. the trash business mm-hmm. if a hooker was on the line, <laughs> right. i don't right. care what it is okay right, right? Yeah. so that's what i'm offering to them I'm not offering to be the best or top music so i'm offering right. some avenues that they might not see or things that you don't 
know until you actually experience it. So listen, as this, what people might consider an OG, man, I want all of us to win at the end of the day. So Period. holler at me. I'm here. I'm, I'm always here, bro. I just wanted to take a minute to say that because that's a a reoccurring thing I keep hearing that I don't, don't quite really understand why it's that. And, and it's no blame to the younger and it's no blame to the older. It's just like there's a connector missing. So just call yeah. me connector. I'm the <clears throat> connector. Okay. That's, look, you know, look, well, you know, we always real on here. So at the end of the day, it's also people got to be real about things, right? Like, there's, like you said, there's ways to get in touch with you. There's ways to get in touch with anyone. We all, have, majority of us have social media. So yeah. there's a thing called direct messaging. There's a, thing, yeah. there's a thing called commenting on the page. There's a thing yeah. called, I guarantee you in this industry and in this small business, you know someone that knows that person. You Absolutely. Can, you can connect with people. But a yeah. lot of times what happens is, and like I said, be, you know, be real. A lot of people just don't do that simple thing as just like reach out. As simple as that, just reach, just 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 reaching out. Everybody likes to yeah. talk. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? And that's the thing. It's like if if mugs will stop talking, then things will be so much like so much easier. And you can we we can talk in person. It's not mm -hmm. no we just talking to these other people outside of the so and so. It's like no, you know what? All right, yo, Brian, listen, I ain't gonna hold you, bro. I I I've been feeling this way for a minute. All right. Yeah. I don't know why. Like, like I don't like you. Like, you know what I'm like yeah. whatever it is. Yeah. Like, but yeah. Like I said, it's not happening because people are just simply not. They'll like your joint too. They'll like your picture. They'll like your post. Mm -hmm. you know, you'll see them floating around. But that's what we gotta do. People gotta start really reaching out on some like, listen, man, it's, I, I, what's going on? I don't feel yeah. right, or I've been hearing, or whatever. But yeah. you know, they ain't gonna do it to you though, because you, Brian. But they it's don't corny know. to say it, but it's the truth. You know what I'm saying? Like, and that's the part yeah, that I feel you. Mm -hmm. I, I feel, and that's some real. And then, you know what? You you know me. So to say something like that, look, man, there look. it is. <laughs> <laughs> look, man. <laughs> Come on. At the end of the day, you should be treating everybody that you interact with the same respect, period. You don't know yep. what's going to come from what. And we're all humans, man. It's just have some grace, bro. Like, have some grace about interactions. Have some grace about work. Have some grace about your career. Um, expectations, <laughs> like insecurities. Yeah. Like, seriously, just have some grace, man, because we all struggle with our thing. This unrealistic expectation, I, I don't know. I don't get it. But here I am. I'm real. I don't care. I put my whole life on the on the cross, bro. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I, I, I've I've done things. You gotta be so careful how you say things. Listen. <laughs> I know. You, do, Come on. You, you really do. You really do. I'm yeah. for the people. There you go. Right. I'm for the people. So holla at me. Yeah. Simple as that. Yeah. He for the people. I'm for the people. We for the people. Why you know? Something? Hey man, so look, we, we you know, we 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 done basically all my questions is gone. I'm I'm glad because this this is we got things done. Yeah, we got it done. It's over with. Right. Before we get out of here, bro, um, I know you've been doing some things, you know, for 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 a minute in the industry, and because and earlier you mentioned, you know, I've been in the game thirty years in this business, <laughs> and when you've been in the game that long, I know you get certain things, you get blessed. Have you have mm -hmm. you ever been like have you ever been like given anything or have you been have you been any awards whatever something i have um i actually uh, i'm proud of these uh these awards they're sitting in my studio so um, oh, God. this one wow. is madonna oh man okay <laughs> and this one is um, justin timberlake Ooh. Oh God! And this one yeah. is J Lo and Shakira. Damn, um, I didn't know this. That one. Yep, J Lo and uh, Shakira, and uh, this is for the. Uh, this is the Oscar that, well. for uh, the uh, what is that for? That's for the, oh, the Academy Awards. 
Oh, God. And this one I'm kind of proud of. This was for a film of uh, Two Distant Strangers. Right? Uh, yeah, um, I saw James that. That's crazy. That was a good, bro. That was a really good mm -hmm. film, right? Mm -hmm. um, please watch that. It's on Netflix. It's a really good film. Um, but anyway, it was an independent film. And um, this was my first, like, scoring thing that I've done that James called me in and then won Oscar. Shout out to James. Uncle yeah. James. Yeah. So um, those are not for bragging or anything like that. But mm -hmm. honestly, I'm a young That's kid from Philly, man. This, I, I, I could have never imagined this. And I want to take this accolades, these the accolades and these things to help. And I want to instill them into people to say, man, listen, you can do this. Yep. You can do it 100%. You know, I, and I'm glad you say that because, and I don't want y'all to take that lightly, man. Like I, I say, it's funny because I say the same exact thing. I say this thing to like the kids. I'm, I coach basketball and I train or whatever. And I tell them that because I'm like, even though you see me out here or I'm, I'm doing it, like the music, I'm like, but I'm still here with y'all because I want y'all to understand I still come back home. 100%. I still go to Luke Oil and get gas and get and get papers. Like, you know what I'm saying? 100%. Like, I'm right 100%. here with y'all and y'all can still be the same. Like me, do your thing, but you can still make a living off of what you love to do and, 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 and you know, and get those accolades and still be able to come home. Yeah. Like, with no pressure, no stress. 100%. But that's the that's crazy, yo. That's crazy. I didn't. I knew you had yeah. all of. You probably got some more. Where in the bed or somewhere? It's a bedroom somewhere. That's, that's a couple of them I just color with at night, you know. But. All right. I love that you do this podcast, bro. It's it's uh it's it's really what's needed, you know. Whether people agree mm -hmm. or whether they don't agree, you know, voices Thank are you. needed uh, for perspective. And Thank you, bro. any type of industry. So what you doing, man, be encouraged. I know you are like the Bobby Brown of the daggone drum uh, musician game. You know? Dummy. But, <laughs> but hey, who don't love Bobby Brown, yo? Who Come don't on. love Bobby? Who don't right. love Bobby and all his craziness? Right. He kept it real. So yeah. there's a lane for everybody. So I love that you you do this. You and Kareem. Reem, uh, all of y'all do this, man. <laughs> And um, thank you for having me because I don't, I don't get a lot of platforms to really speak my mind. You know, so hey, listen, you, you listen. You, when you want, you want to do another one? Let's do another one when you get okay. a chance, right? Mm -hmm. Let's have it interactive. I want to okay. hear people's gripes. I want to hear where they are in their world. You know, to pinpoint in on okay. some of those problems in a realistic way, like so. You, so you have them come in, have them join. Absolutely. Oh, I'm with it. I'm I'm yeah. with it. I'm I'm no. blasting somebody, so let's don't come on live looking looking peasy, cause I am, but I don't care. I always talk about my peasy head, but no, oh I'm with God. it, yo. I'm so with yeah. that. I'm with that. That's dope. That's a great idea. Yep. Yeah. Well, listen, man. I'm gonna let you go. I know you got something to do today. You ain't never just chilling. <laughs> so. Gotta work. Gotta work. Yep. Yeah. I love you so much, V. I love thank you too, you for, man. Thank you, thank, thank you for taking your time out to come on here and talk to the people. Um, y'all heard them. We're gonna do another one, so y'all, y'all be in, you know, be aware, stay in tune for that. Um, and what you got coming up? Anything, anything soon? So, I, I know you uh, think out what you're doing. Yeah, so so we go back out with Pink, uh, June 6th. Okay. Um, and and my album is two songs shy of being mixed. Okay. Um, so um, look out for that. Yep. Um, the signature symbol is out as well. Mm -hmm. And just look out for some new ventures. I got some things for 2025 that I'm um, setting up now. So I'm, I'm really excited about it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's so, up. And my last shout out I want to do, shout out to everybody at Sweetwater uh, for this weekend. Yep. It was really incredible. Shout out to Ray Lazor from Corn, Eric Moore, Queen Cora, Mike Mangini, Stan Moore. My dude, uh, shout That's out to all of you guys um, for paving the way. Uh, shout out to all the companies that was there to support and uh, do everything. But shout out to Sweetwater. I made some amazing connects there this weekend, and uh, I have a lot of ideas. So, yeah, Sweetwater. 
Yeah. That's what's up, man. Congratulations, bro. And it's you know it's gonna keep Thank going. You, it's it, it's gonna keep keep going. You know, until yeah. you're 170. But no, nah, hope Brian, so. <laughs> yeah, hell yeah, you know it, y'all. I love you. I love y'all. I love you y'all too, be man. Safe. Real talk is back, baby. We gonna keep coming back. Next time, Jack. Y'all be safe. B, tell them we out. We out. Yeah, we out. Let us know for real talk. Here we go. Oh, this bitch.